What up, everybody? Detective Don Carter's racking up enemies on enemies, but like he told Monet, it doesn't look like he gives a f at the same time. Carter has all the power, and he's not afraid to use it. He's quick to let anyone know he could ruin their whole life by putting them in jail, or he could just kill them without any type of consequences. Before we ever found out that Carter's task force was even dirty, they already had IAB breathing down their necks, mainly because Felicia Lewis's repeated write-ups for excessive use of force. The papers that Effie printed out said that she had six violations. Episode 5, Carter made his first real enemy when he decided he's going to put Monet Tejada under his thumb by following her to a robbery of Noma Shipman. At this point, he gave Monet and Drew the ultimatum to either work for him and play by his rules or die or go to prison to die. Like Monet told Drew in episode 6, she ain't never let no dirty cop control her before and she's not about to start with Carter. So from the time Carter showed up at that robbery, best believed that Monet was already plotting on a way to get rid of Carter. And we saw that the next morning when she already had Drew following Carter around trying to get some dirt on him. Then Kamal Tate saw Nico Halston kill a man and take a bag of money at the Russian raid. So he went to tell Carter what he knew, only for Carter to kill him because he wouldn't compromise. This brought on the return of Congressman Rashad Tate in Episode 7, devastated about the sudden death of his brother Kamal and looking for answers about who killed his brother. As in control of a situation as Carter normally is, he was clearly shook by killing Kamal and nervous in the presence of Rashad Tate. Something Rashad guaranteed picked up on from the beginning. Keep in mind how he could always tell when Ghost and Tariq were lying. Rashad has very good discernment. He knew it was Alphonse robbing his fundraiser before he ever shot him and removed his mask. When Tate was talking to Carter looking for answers, he stared him straight in the face. Then he told him that he's going to need whoever did this to pay. And as soon as Rashad said this, Carter had to look away before answering him. A sign he was lying and something that I'm sure Rashad picked up on. When Carter tried to feed Tate the story about it being an open investigation, Tate didn't give a damn and told Carter if he didn't give him answers, then he would go to the press looking for answers. Again, possibly testing Carter because if Carter was clean and had nothing to hide, he would have let him go to the press. So Carter pinned Kamal's murder on the Russians and told him they were working 24-7 around the clock to get this guy. The Russians have probably taken more weight for things they haven't done in power than any other power character or group. Everyone in book 2 loves to pin things on the Russians. Then after Carter killed a man and framed him for Kamal's murder, he called Rashad to give him the good news. At this point, Carter couldn't even barely look at Rashad. And Rashad asked him, are you absolutely positive this is the guy that got Kamal? Then he walked to the other side behind Carter, looking like he was holding himself back from going at Carter right then and there. But Tate wasn't showing Carter his hand and spit in the man's face and called him a piece of shit. Something Carter was already called earlier in the episode when he talked to Monet. Then Tate told Carter he wished he pulled the trigger on the man himself. Then he said, I can see why my brother chose this unit, detective. Nice work. It was at this point I knew 100% that Tate knew Carter killed his brother. Then Tate hit Carter with the whole good brother routine. He had Carter thinking he's just as naive as his brother Kamal. But Tate is utilizing Law 21 of the 48 Laws of Power. Play a sucker to catch a sucker. Seem dumber than your mark. But Congressman Rashad Tate is the only one utilizing this power law against Detective Carter. So is Detective Nico Halston. Carter's downfall could potentially be thinking he's smarter than everyone else. Like Theo told Davis in Season 3, his problem is he always thinks he's the smartest motherfucker in the room. After Carter's initial meeting with Tate, he needed to resolve Kamal's murder ASAP and went to talk to his lieutenants Halston and Lewis. Lewis was happy about Kamal being dead because he was getting too close to find out about them. And she said that he almost got to Zay Green before Drew killed him. But Detective Halston didn't feel that way and called Kamal a good cop. But Carter wasn't being honest with them that he was the one who pulled the trigger to take out Kamal. And just let them know that they need to pin it on the Russians ASAP to make sure that Tate doesn't go to the press and have the IAB bothering them even more. 
From the time they got to the raid, Halston was suspicious about why they were the only two doing the kick door. Then Carter killed the man and put the gun in the man's hand and Halston walked in and saw Carter standing over him. At this point, I think he knew what Carter was up to and walked over to the man and said, You really think this is who got Kamal? And asked him about the guy who got away. But Carter let him know what the plan was, pretty much letting Halston know he killed Kamal without saying it. Then he asked Halston if he was good with that. And Halston replied, yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. But clearly Halston felt a way about it and he was bluffing. Carter just couldn't see because all he has going on. But maybe if Kamal would have bluffed like Halston and said he was cool with everything, he would still be alive. Then at the end of episode 7, Diana killed Felicia Lewis and Carter agreed that he would help them get away with it as long as they get him the leverage that he needs to go against Noma. Creating another enemy in Tariq who already told Sion that he wasn't going to be Carter's slave like he was. And we now know from the episode 8 trailer that the crew is going to unite together to take out Carter. That Tariq and Monet are going to have a sit down with Kane and Noma about how they were going to eliminate their common enemy. The trailer also shows Detective Halston meeting up with Kane and Noma. So most likely Halston is about to switch sides because Carter's no longer being honest with him and he no longer trusts Carter. And much like Mecca, I also think Halston is for sale to the highest bidder. But the real reason that Halston's going to flip on Carter isn't just because of Kamal, but it will mainly be about Felicia Lewis. Because there's no way that Carter is actually going to tell Halston the truth about what happened to her. And Halston's going to feel like if Carter's cleaning house, then he could be next. Something else that is very important is Felicia had a son who saw Diana and Tariq. The thing is when Brayden and Effie went to Halston's house, we see he has a child around the same age and who looks a lot like Felicia's son. So I got to ask the question, is Felicia Halston's baby mama? And Maggie Halston's wife is just a stepmother. Most likely, the child spends most of its time with Halston because of Lewis's history of drug use, similar to Lindsay Proctor, either though Felicia and Nico had a much better relationship than Joe and Lindsay. And just like how Halston meets up with Noma and Kane, I wouldn't be surprised if he also meets up with Rashad Tate to confirm to Rashad what he already knows, and Halston will give Rashad the drop on Carter's schedule for an opportunity to take him out. But the problem is there's only one place that someone could really get a good shot at Carter at. And that is while he's at the cathedral talking in the confessional booth. Carter was first introduced as he was talking to the priest in the confession booth. And I think that will also be how he ends. I think that Tate will be waiting in the confessional booth ready to put the bullet in Carter's head. Most likely Carter will even testify in that booth confessing to the priest all the dirt he's been doing trying to repent before Tate kills him. And I don't know if it's the same church or not, but I think there's a chance that it is. And that is the same church that Reverend Macedon is the leader of. And keep in mind that Tate and Reverend Macedon are very, very close. And that Macedon is also a crooked priest. Because of that, I wouldn't even be surprised at all if he actually helps Tate pull this off. Tate will probably be dressed like a nun or something like that to hide his identity when he leaves. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts theories, and predictions in the comments.